Hey, you guys. Hi, Magnus. Who were you fighting with, Magnus? Here's a jugged boy. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, Dane. Hey, Mr. Dane. Oh, aren't you a pretty boy? He lost half his waddle. Look at it. Look at his waddle. Look at his waddle. Look at his waddle. He lost half of it. Oh, uh, chicken porn. Okay, well. <laughs> this day is so warm. I just had to come out and just, just film. It's so late in the day. I just had to come out here. Hello, little girl. Hello, little dovey. Is that dovey or cricket? I can't even tell them apart anymore. So cricket waddles. Oh, this is dove. This is dove. Hi, dove. Like I'm walking in cornflakes. <coughs> oh, goodness. I wish all this pasture stuff would stop flying all over the place. Let's see. That is scarlet. She's very bloated. I don't think I'm, she's going to be around much longer. There's her sister Shelby next, right there. And then I guess I got Wren and Phoebe down there. This is as far as my zoom will go. I need a new lens, but I just don't want to spend the money for it. I do okay without it. They're coming back in delay, everybody, just like happens in November, December. This is one. This this time last year is when everybody was saying I changed my feed, and all of a sudden they're laying. Well, guess what? Mine all of a sudden are laying, and I didn't change their feed. <laughs> Just the same as last year. That's what happened last year with everybody else. New chicken keepers in the second or third year chicken keeping don't understand that does happen, <laughs> and they were all blaming the feed. Raina, why are you laying in the in the in the leaves like that? That's not exactly a good dust bathing spot, is it? I think they were dust bathing, and they're 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 full of dirt and their feathers, and they're just laying down because they're so heavy. Well, that's all. I just wanted to. It's breezy out here. It's beautiful. And this will be the last nice day, and it's going to be cold again. But yeah, they're laying again. Zara, uh, Zara and somebody else in that pen is laying, and they're old, the older ones. One of the bantams is laying. Juliet is laying, and Raina is laying. And that's all that's laying at the moment. But that's several more than I had before, <laughs> because they're they're coming back into production now. They took time off to all of them to molt. Happens every year the same way. Even with shorter days, they're coming back in delay. They took a long break. Oh, it seemed like a long break. We were getting eggs at Walmart. Brown eggs. Brown eggs for 62, I mean 67 cents a, a dozen. And I've got a, I, my husband bought a bunch of them when he found them at that price again. 67 cents a dozen for brown eggs and they look I mean they're dark brown too they don't look like the brown egg layers I've had around here they look like the dark brown egg layers which is interesting and they're 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 put into the carton in different ways it's almost like great value Walmart bought local eggs and packaged them up under their name you know not as orangey as my my chickens eggs because mine get out the free range but still I don't know, it's really weird. But I got enough to tide me over till more come back into lay. And then I can depend on my own chicken's eggs again. Mm. Anyway, that's all just a very short video. People say, I want to see the chickens. Well, they're the chickens. And black one is Layla. And over there, the brown one, way over there. Of course, is Raina, you know that. They're both named after... <laughs> A country music kind of nighttime soap that my husband used to love. Characters in that. She's not named Layla because she lays eggs. She's named Layla because there was a girl in there with black hair named Layla. Anyway, uh, it's a nice day. I don't know when I'll get this up on on the channel. Probably not tonight. 
I'll, I will not be hatching any more from these birds. I can't handle any more roosters here, and every time you hatch eggs, you get roosters. So I can't handle. I've already got way too many. And um, no, I'm not going to hatch any from this. Now, if I had other chickens laying where I could put those eggs under the bantam, broody bantams, I would do that if I wanted more chickens. But right now, I can't handle any more. I need some of these guys to just go ahead. These the older ones I have to just go ahead and die off. I mean, they're they're six to six to twelve years old. Oh well, Mina's twelve, but she's you know after her it goes down to I think eight and a half years old or something like that. Well, there you go. Y'all have a good day. Hey folks, uh, just sort of a brief message. Um, I posted in the community section, but um, I was watching a video this morning by Integrated Preparedness, Steve Smith, um, and he the title of it had something to do with, um, you know, a, a survival, uh, here's a t basically a survival test. What would you do if you are caught in a city with, where, with which you are not familiar and everything goes down? The entire grid goes down. And it, it's just, you are somewhere else when it hits, okay? Um, maybe somewhere you don't know people, somewhere you're not super familiar with, what would you do? Are you ready for that? Well, when he started talking about that, I suddenly remembered a video many years ago. Well, not many, but you know, relative. Many is a relative term. Um, it was by um, a, a couple. Well, this it starred the wife of the couple, and some of you probably already subscribed to Guildbrook Farm. And um, I believe this was the first video of hers I ever saw, and it was produced in September 2016. But, um, it was chronicle, chronicling a true ST, SHTF situation that happened to her a year before, well, a year and a half before, April of 2015. And I suddenly thought, you know, this video was the one. It was the, I think it was the first one of theirs I ever saw. And, um, it really hit me. It was very, it, it hit something inside of me. And, um... I really think you should watch that video. It's about 41 minutes. Um, she's, she was married. She had two children, beautiful daughters. Um, and she decided to go. She decided to travel to Nepal. She wanted to visit the sites and the, the temples and all that kind of stuff in Nepal. Well, and she hired a Sherpa to take her up a mountain. And, and she was going to go up a tower to look at... Um, You'll have to watch the video, but uh, it was wow. She went to a, a, a motel or hotel. Um, I forgot the city. These these <laughs> these names are foreign names are a little bit tricky because I have to go back and look at it. And lo and behold, <sighs> Nepal was hit with an almost eight magnitude earthquake. Yeah, it was a big one. It was catastrophic. And that earthquake. 9,000 people died, over 25,000 injured. Um, I think that 9,000 is what they know of. I don't know. Maybe the death toll went up later. Um, and, but she was talking about this a year and a half after the actual earthquake. Uh, so obviously she survived or she wouldn't be talking about it. Uh, and that, that was when now we'd already had chickens for, well, I'll say over 10 years. Well, by the time I, she did her video. I had had chickens for about 11 years, and we were already growing gardens, and we were we were canning and putting away food. So we were already homesteading. But this particular video brought home a lot of the realities of what happens in a true SHTF, with the additional issues of being in a foreign country where almost no one speaks English. And even the U.S. Embassy was destroyed. I think what she said was like in the next town over and it was destroyed. In the town she was, she ended up in. So I'm not going to tell the whole story, obviously. It's a very long story. It's fascinating and it's worth every single minute of the watch. That, that one video started me to getting a lot more serious about preparedness. Not just growing some food and, you know, living in mountains, but actual preparedness 
and you know I, you know we got water we got we got the big water toast we've we started to store water we started to think about more about our solar we do have a solar system and it has have an upgraded inverter too from the one we started with even though it's still around i can i can actually bring that into service again um but i started to think about more aspects of preparedness and being as how she was raised in rural pennsylvania uh in a valley between i think two mountain ranges about 30 miles from the nearest town which was her father's choice uh, he's long since passed away, but it was her father's choice to live there. He said he didn't want to follow the money to the cities, which I understand. Well, she, she was raised that way. Then she went on this journey like most younger people do when they go work up in the corporate world and they, they start get, their life starts to take them away from who they are. And um, that particular video really struck a chord with me. At that time and that's when I began to talk to my husband more about we need to do more than what we're doing we need to do better we need to branch out we need to think of every scenario that could possibly happen and you know a lot of preparedness channels they always and they think about what could happen they pontificate about what can happen but few have actually experienced anything like what Jamie did um, but she because of the way she was raised, she went in a with a preparedness mindset. Nobody can anticipate what's going to happen. So please watch Jamie's video from 2016. She also has another great video about why we homestead, which tells a lot about her childhood and how she kind of left that and then went back to her roots, so to speak. I think they live in one of the Carolinas uh, right now. I don't know, I can never remember is North Carolina or South Carolina. I think it's North, but anyway, they live up there. And they they have, when I first saw her videos, they were living in the suburbs. They were still raising chickens, they had gardens, and they got goats. And then their suburbs got more suburban. And their people were beginning to complain about, oh my God, there are animals next to my really beautiful, fancy schmancy house. <sighs> um, so they started looking for land. And you know, you can watch their videos, but I'm gonna, I linked her video uh, about the true SHTF when she was in Nepal and how that all played out and it's well worth a watch because the bottom line is nobody's coming to help you the government did not come help them she depended on the kindness and the graciousness of strangers who couldn't even who could barely speak English most of them couldn't speak it at all I believe and uh, they helped her survive for the several days until the owner of the hotel who was the only one in town with a generator, by the way, which is interesting. Um, he actually put her in the back of a motorcycle and he took her to the airport. She couldn't get into the airport because they were not letting anybody in unless you had a, t a ticket. Well, she didn't have a paper ticket, but because the owner of the hotel had a generator and she was able to keep her phone charged, she was she had her ticket on the phone and she was able to get in there and, and leave the country. Um, but. Like she says, there's nobody's coming to save you. You have to be ready to save yourself. You have to be ready for anything you think could happen at any moment. You don't know when it's going to be. She was on a vacation, a, a travel, uh, a trip that she wanted to go on. You don't think about that. And I often think about people who are on these cruise ships in the middle of the ocean and something happens on the cruise ship and I'm thinking, uh, you ain't getting me on a floating germ factory. Forget it. I don't understand the appeal of it at all. I don't want to be trapped. I feel trapped there. But nobody's coming to help you. You've got to do this. is all up to you. This is on you. Um, frugality is great. And, and, you know, I talk about frugality. Well, frugality can, is, is, is actually a little bit of a, it's, it's an attachment to preparedness, I do believe. Because the more frugal you are, the more prepared you are, because you haven't spent all your money and, you, and used all your resources. Um, and you know how to survive on little, a very little money. Jamie also had a lot of cash. She had cash with her. So there were ATMs there, but once the electric was out, when that, when that and all the aftershocks hit, there was no more electricity. <laughs> and uh, the ATMs were shut down. She, she made a point to go to the ATMs and make sure she had cash on her. I keep saying cash. People are like, oh, cash is not going to be any good. Sonny, honey, cash is good now. It's good now. It's still legal tender in this country. And until they outlaw cash entirely and nobody's taking it and it doesn't it doesn't it's just like it's like a hunk of gold which to me is is ridiculous um nobody's gonna take your gold either they don't care about your gold they may for a few days and then go wait a minute i can't eat this stuff what am i gonna do with this a rock 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, there, that, that was a pivotal video in making me become more serious about the, pre the preparedness. I wish I had seen that video. Well, I don't wish it had happened to her at all, but I wish I had seen a video like that that really hit me back when we first got here in 2002. Because at that point, I wasn't thinking homestead. I wasn't thinking nothing except getting away and hiding in the mountains. I couldn't see a people anymore. I didn't want to see another human being after all I had to go through as a realtor. The worst of human nature. Well, that's not really the worst of human nature. The worst of human nature comes out in SHTF. You don't change who you are. If you were not such a great person before, you're going to be a way worse person than that. You're going to, if you have any sort of conscience, you're going to just kind of put that aside so you can survive. Some people will. Some people won't. So, I don't, I don't want to ramble anymore. I just gave you the report on the chickens, and I linked for you Jamie's video. Um, I can't even imagine. Of course, you won't catch me traveling anywhere. Um, I, have a, I, I flew on a plane maybe three times, three or four times in my whole life, and that was before 9-11, and I will never get on a plane. I'm not up for being groped or medically raped with a, with a stick up my nose for the COVIDity. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to the TSA. I'm not going to be groped by strangers. And I will not submit to the invasive nose stick. So I'd rather drive four days and fly for four hours anyway. Um, so traveling ain't something I'm going to do. Now I might be, you know, I might be not home, but town isn't that far from home. I can walk it. I don't know if my husband can walk it, but I can sure walk it done it before. I've walked 20 miles in a day before. Ruined my feet, but I've walked 20 miles in a day. So, uh, I'm going to let you go. It's getting cloudy. It's warm today, but it's turning tonight, and we're going to get colder weather. We're going to get wetter weather, and i got to make sure all we can have dry wood up here on the decks for our wood stove, and i got to continue quilting. So, have a great day, everybody. Think about what I said. Please watch her videos. Her early videos are spectacular. She's got a lot of canning videos, and that was back when I... This channel's name was Cynthia Fuller, and uh, she had recommended me for a chicken information channel back then, and uh, I followed everything they did, and uh, I still do. They're doing, just things have changed in their lives lately, but um, you'll see. You'll see if you haven't met Jamie and Jeremy, you ought to. Bye, y'all.